The final portion of The Canarian is an extraordinary tale of the magnificent voyage home of Jean de Bethencourt, where he would make appearances at Florence, Rome, and meet the Pope. It even ends with a melodrama over his wife and jealousy over his brother Morellet. This video is a follow-up on my video on the Canary Islands and Jean de Bethencourt. I'll give you a somewhat brief rundown on what the final chapters of the Canarian are on, specifically after chapter 90, which describes Bethencourt's final departure from the Canary Islands, which I cover in another video. Jean de Bethencourt, Lord of the Canary Islands, departed the archipelago for the last time, and after meeting with the King of Castile and Seville, would meet with the Pope in Rome. The monk Pierre Bontier and priest Jean Le Verrier, who are brought with him to chronicle his expedition, wrote that the Pope addressed Bethencourt with, you are one of our children, and as such I hold you. You have achieved a goodly deed, and have made a goodly beginning, which will be the forerunner, by God's grace, of a still greater conclusion. The King of Spain writes me word that you have conquered certain islands, whose inhabitants have now embraced the faith of Jesus Christ, and that you have caused them all to be baptized, for which cause I wish to hold you as my son and as a son of the church because you are the originator of conquests which other sons shall hereafter achieve, for, from what I gather, the mainland of Guinea and Barbary is not far distant from the islands, indeed only twelve leagues from them. Furthermore, the King of Spain informs me that you penetrated ten leagues into the land of Guinea, and that you killed and brought away Saracens from that country. You are indeed a man worthy of honor, and it is my wish that you may not be forgotten, but that you may have, now, a place amongst other kings and be mentioned in their list. With respect to your desire for the appointment of a prelate and bishop over the country, your reason and your wish are both praiseworthy, and I consent to appoint whomsoever you may name, provided he be suitable for the office. They then write that Albert de las Casas was appointed as Bishop of the Canary Islands, make a mental note of this detail, and so ends his meeting with the Pope, at least according to chapter 91 of the Canarian. After this, in chapter 95, they write that Bethencourt arrived in Florence, and that word spread of his arrival. Monsieur de Bethencourt rode as far as Florence, where he found some merchants who had previously heard speak of him and of his doings. When he arrived, some people asked who this grandee was, and some of his people answered that he was the King of Canary. It soon became common talk that a king had arrived in the city, who was called the King of Canary, and that he was lodged at the sign of the Stag in the High Street. In chapter 96, they write that Jean de Bethencourt became jealous of his brother Morellet over a joke his wife made concerning Morellet, and Jean soon had a falling out with his brother Renault over the affair. But Jean de Bethencourt eventually reconciles with his wife and his brothers. The last chapter describes the death of Bethencourt, which they write happened in 1422. The Canarian is a fascinating period account about Jean de Bethencourt and his establishment of the Lordship of the Canaries, but is very disturbed to learn that none of this happened. Jean de Bethencourt did not go to Florence, did not go to Rome, and was not graciously welcomed by the Pope. The entire final voyage as written in the Canary did not happen, from visiting the Pope to the Bethencourt's familial melodrama. First of all, according to Saran Ceaunescu, neither Florence nor the Vatican archives have any documents that mention the supposed details of Bethencourt's visits. It is true that Bethencourt sought the appointment of a bishop for the islands, but Saran Ceaunescu writes that that would have been done in Avignon or Peniscola, not in Rome. Another problem is that Albert de las Casas was not appointed as Bishop of the Canary Islands as written. In fact, it was Jean Le Verrier himself, one of the authors of the Canarian, who was appointed in Rome by Pope Benedict XIII as the coadjutor to Bishop Fray Mendo, and that was in 1419, without the presence of Jean de Bethencourt. As for Jean de Bethencourt, the date of 1422 they give is incorrect as according to Saran Ceaunescu, he most likely died between August 17, 1425 and January 24, 1426 in Grainville. 
Honestly, I'm just confused as to why the authors of the Canarian added the final parts of the Canarian. Why did they feel the need to falsify so much? I have to ask if they felt the narrative needed a triumphant ending of sorts. Here is what Sarah and Choronescu wrote to describe these final chapters of the Canarian and its reliability. For another part, the story of the final voyage of Bethencourt is another series of inventions, ridiculous to a certain view. Continuing, it's true then that those final episodes of the Chronicle, as well as those that he tells in regard to the familial displeasures of Bethencourt, his jealousy and dispute with Morlet, all belong to the domain of fantasy, and they hardly deserve a refutation. While writing about the coat of arms of Bethencourt, specifically the false depiction of its supporters being two half-naked savages, they have this to say about the trustworthiness of the Canarian as a source. The only document that represents his coat of arms in this manner is the Chronicle of the Conquest, and we should add, on this point, as in many other details, its credibility is very reduced and almost non-existent. Originally, this was a much shorter video just about Bethencourt's papal visit, but that quickly morphed into something else, for obvious reasons. Honestly, it is a shame because it means the entire narrative has to be called into question. What else is untrue and what dates were wrong, especially since I don't want to spread falsehoods. So why is the Canarian unreliable as a source despite being a period account? There is a reason for this madness, and it is the fact there are two versions of the Canarian, a manuscript G and a manuscript B, as labeled by Sarah and Choronescu. They have discrepancies between each other, including several dates being changed. Manuscript G, for example, only has one illustration, but it is very detailed and in color. In it, we can see the arms of Gadifer de la Salle. Manuscript G is the older manuscript, from the point of view of Gadifer de la Salle. Sarah and Choronescu date Manuscript G from 1420 to 1430 due to his calligraphy. The 1872 English translation of the Canarian by Richard Henry Major was based on the later Manuscript B. This is the one I read. Manuscript B has 84 illustrations, but they have a very basic color palette of brown, black, and white highlights. Manuscript B was written by a Norman descendant of the Bethencourts, likely Jean V de Bethencourt, the only son of Morillette, the brother of Jean de Bethencourt. It is based on Manuscript G, reproducing most things faithfully except attributing to Bethencourt what was originally attributed to Gadifer de la Salle. It downplays the role Gadifer de la Salle had in conquering the Canaries. Manuscript B was written between 1488 and 1491. The prefaces for both are mostly identical, with the main difference being that Manuscript B states they wrote from the start of the conquest till April 19th, 1404. Manuscript G changes that date to April 19th, 1406. One example of bias and unreliability is the date of Bethencourt's return to Lanzarote after it was pacified and its kings imprisoned. Manuscript G writes the date of his return as April 19, 1404, but Manuscript B finds this fact inconvenient and simply omits the date of his return, especially since Gadifer and the other men were counting on Bethencourt's prompt return for supplies, but he arrived much later than Christmas 1402, the date he promised to return on. You can see how they felt about that in this quote. Another more humorous difference between the two is that Manuscript B's author did not even know Spanish, notably misspelling the common name Sancho or Sanchez as Sariche. Learning about how much of this was untrue was initially disturbing. It goes to show that contemporary sources, while very useful, the people writing them, even just copying them down, have inherent biases, agendas, knowledge gaps, and narratives they wish to tell. But in spite of my initial shock, I am grateful to learn of the Canarian and all its flaws, because this is another layer of fascinating knowledge that makes history have more character and richness. 
simply because not only the Canary Islands have history, but even its retelling has its own history. This was enjoyable to learn about.